All right, so there's nothing to follow up on here, so I think it's finally time to talk to Morrigan and proceed. Who has she's been she's been waiting patiently, not being spoken to ever since uh, like 20 episodes ago when we uh, when we first dealt with the Temple of Mythal. So we're gonna see how she reacts to the fact that uh how we how we how, how we uh, proceed in the situation here where uh, I have the power of the ancient elven god and the, uh, the 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 water that was absorbed into me and then I'm gonna proceed to finish the game and anything else I want to wrap up on but don't worry I'm going to come back and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna do a branching storyline because as you saw like I, I replayed temple of my thaw where uh, I let Morgan take the power, and we saw what happened. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to, after I beat the game, proceed from around this point in the story, but from the previous save file, so I'll actually be like two levels lower in that context, if it, which may or may not come into play. But uh, we're going to see how the game plays out if Morgan had the power all along, and I'll, I'll also make the opposite of whatever decisions I end up making in this canon playthrough where I'm playing the way I want to. Here we go. <laughs> I get very confused wandering around this area still. It's true. Mother Giselle. I haven't talked to her for a while. Does she actually have anything new? I, I realize I don't really check in with her. I heard reports of the events at the Temple of Mathal, Inquisitor. It sounds magnificent. I hope we can explore it fully once Corypheus is defeated. I'm surprised a Chantry mother wants to explore a temple full of references to elven gods. The Maker is great enough to withstand whatever truths we uncover. Whether these elven gods were myths, or simply aspects of the Maker, they are worth studying. But of course, all that must wait until Corypheus himself is defeated. Was there anything else, Inquisitor? Farewell. Be well, Inquisitor. Oh. And someone's clipping directly through her. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> Mother Giselle's a really respectable uh, religious figure, for, for, due in large to the fact that she uh, she's so comfortable in her faith that she's not she doesn't feel threatened by anything that might contradict it. Instead, she seems she just sees it as an opportunity to better understand it, which is more or less the right way to go. Why are there two diamonds on my map? The war room. What's in the war room? It's not, it doesn't even have a quest marker this time. All right, the final piece. Morgan wishes to talk. She has a plan to counter Corypheus and his dragon. Speak with Morgan in Skyhold's garden. I have no idea what's going. I don't know why the war, war the war. It's weird that the worm has a quest marker on it. I guess maybe it always has a quest marker on it. I'm just used to it being a marker for like a major story mission. Like for the longest time, it said timely intervention all the time. All right. Hopefully Morgan's happy to see me. This is definitely a time to create a new save, so I can refer back to it. Hey, oh. Inquisitor, thank the Maker you're here. Morrigan chased after her son into the Illuvian. She was terrified. She was chasing Kieran. She said he activated the mirror somehow, and then she ran into it. I've never seen Morrigan like that. You must go after her. I will find help, Inquisitor. I never saw Morgan like that. That's actually an interesting moment of like, oh yeah, Liliana's acknowledging the fact that she knew Morgan before all this. Because from the Inquisitor's perspective, I don't think we've had a lot of evidence about that, but... So, things have uh, changed here. It's funny when you show up to a mission where there's a timely aspect to it of like, oh, you just missed her, she ran into the Illuvium, and it's like... I just fucked off and just ran around in open worlds for like 20 hours, like... How long ago did she do this? I don't know. Was she always going to happen to do it right before I came here? <laughs> it's just it's something funny about uh, really timing intensive quests happening in a game that lets you just fuck off and do whatever you want for so long. So here we go. Final plunge. Wait. This isn't the crossroads. This is the fade. How did the Illuvian lead here? Can it go anywhere? Oh. So the, going into the fade is supposed to be this totally unobtainable feat. And now if we're here for the second time in this game, just wandered directly into it. Didn't even end up in the place that's supposed to be connecting all the alluviums together. This might be why Morgan was so afraid if, uh... If, if is it Kieran is his name? We, he's not really much of a character so far, so it's hard to remember him, but... Might be why his, uh... Why the child was able to activate it, or, or why this is scary. Uh, follow Morgan into the alluvium. 
That's yeah, there's nothing new there. So things look different. These people were apparently having a fast a, a fantastic dinner of skulls before they were hung. Very unfortunate. So I wonder if this has something to do with the origins of uh of Kieran cuz he was created in a weird ritual in and in order to absorb the spirit of a an archdemon and I wonder what if that comes into play. Silky handkerchief. So we're running up to ruin. We're running up to various mineral deposits, but instead of the mineral deposits, we're just getting weird random items instead. Is that a skull wall? Kind of looks like it. And there's a staircase going nowhere. Everything's kind of a night. Fade's always a nightmare. But I'm wondering if uh, the existence of this boy is going to have a direct impact Oregon. on. Go back. I must find Kieran before it's too late. Well, we could work together, right? But yeah, I wonder if uh, Kieran's uh, history of being created to absorb a dark, a, uh, an archdemon's soul is going to affect the ending here, where we're dealing with a potential fake archdemon. Why would Kieran do this? How could he do this? We stand in the Fade. To direct the Illuvian here would require immense power. If he is lost to me now, after all I have sacrificed... We'll find him, Morrigan. He can't be far. The Fade is infinite. He could literally be anywhere. Whatever happens to him now, it is my doing. I set him on this path. Please, help me look, Inquisitor. Just a little longer. Well, what in the world ha- First of all, genuine, sad, concerned Morgan is such a different character to see. that That's, that's inherently compelling just to have a moment there. But uh, I'm curious what happens in this game if Kieran never existed. If you, if you don't do the ritual and Morgan just abandons you, does she, does he make a does does she end up making a Kieran somehow else? Like just is just someone else the father at that point instead of you instead of the instead of uh, the hero of of uh, Ferelden or Alistair, which I think are the only options in that game. Or uh, does do we have just a different context for coming in here? That's since it would require a completely separate playthrough of the entire game. That's definitely outside the context outside the scope of me doing a non-canon. Uh, playthrough of region, so that's not going to be covered in this playthrough, but I'm curious So we have a lot of wraiths in the area, but they're all running away They don't seem to be combatants. They just seem to be things in the area And we're just picking up random pieces of Just random items like belt of cold resistance. I wonder Are they always the same items or are they I almost could imagine them being like weird items of like we noticed you forgot this somewhere. Here's a chance to get it again. Like a chance to get things you may have missed previously in the game. They, they mostly seem like garbage though. Just minor skill upgrades and things that I have probably thrown away ten times before already. Very striking visuals in this area. There's a vortex up in the sky. Yeah, they, do, they, they have great design on the fade. They, they probably did a better job with the fade in this game than they have in any, any of the other ones. They can even explain the difference in appearance. Who's with him? That's... No. It can't be. Could it be the hero of Ferelden? Or someone? I don't know. Part of me didn't want to just hang out for a moment. But yeah, they, what's cool is they can explain the difference of the appearance and the fade from previous games based on the fact that, uh... This is the first time we've ever been in it physically. Every, every other time was a dream. What is gonna happen here? Mother! Mother. Now, isn't this a surprise? So this is all some kind of family reunion. <laughs> Mother, daughter, grandson. It rather warms the heart, does it not? Kirin is not your grandson. Let him go. As if I were holding the boy hostage. She's always been ungrateful, you see. Ungrateful? I know how you plan to extend your life, wicked crone. You will not have me, and you will not have my son. 
Oh, be a good lad and restrain her. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know. Of course you know. You drank from the well, did you not? <gasps> you... are Mithal. Well, that was unexpected. You, of all people, should expect the unexpected by now. I'm sorry, Mother. I heard her calling to me. She said now was the time. I do not understand. Once I was but a woman, crying out in the lonely darkness for justice. And she came to me, a wisp of an ancient being, and she granted me all I wanted and more. I have carried Mithal through the ages ever since, seeking the justice denied to her. That could have been a demon lying to you. What do the voices tell you? They say you speak the truth. But what was Mithal? A legend given name and called a god? Or something more? Truth is not the end, but a beginning. A herald indeed, shouting to the heavens, harbinger of a new age. As for me, I have had many names, but you may call me Flemeth. I know the name Flemeth. It belongs to an ancient Ferelden legend. It says long ago you left your husband for a lover. Your husband then tricked you, killed your lover, and imprisoned you. Then a spirit came to offer you vengeance. Mithal, that's what you spoke of. One day, someone will summarize the terrible events of your life so quickly. But yes, I was that woman. That is how my tale began. Flemeth appears in other legends, helping heroes for reasons of her own. I nudge history when it's required. Other times, a shove is needed. <laughs> if Mithal is within you, why not reveal yourself? And to whom should I reveal myself? To the elves. To everyone. <laughs> I knew the hearts of men even before Mithal came to me. It is why she came to me. They do not want the truth. And I, I am but a shadow lingering in the sun. Why did Mithal come to you? For a reckoning that will shake the very heavens. And you follow her whims. Do you even know what she truly is? You seek to preserve the powers that were, but to what end? It is because I taught you, girl. Because things happened that were never meant to happen. She was betrayed as I was betrayed, as the world was betrayed. Mithal clawed and crawled her way through the ages to me, and I will see her avenged. Alas, so long as the music plays, we dance. So must I serve you now, because I drank from the well? Is that how you see yourself? A servant? I have no commands for you. Not yet. Then what is it you want? One thing, and one thing only. I have to go now, Mother. No. I will not allow it. He carries a piece of what once was, snatched from the jaws of darkness. You know this. He is not your pawn, Mother. I will not let you use him. Have you not used him? Was that not your purpose, the reason you agreed to his creation? That was then. Now he... He is my son. 
Flemeth extends her life by possessing the bodies of her daughters, Inquisitor. That was the fate she intended for me. I thwarted her, and now she intends to have Kieran instead. Wait, the way she talked about Kieran. I am not the only one carrying the soul of a being long thought lost. He is more than that, Mother. As am I. Yet do you hear me complain? Our destinies are not so easily avoided, dear girl. Mama, I have to. You do not belong to her, Kieran. Neither of us do. If Kieran is so special, why did you wait until now to come for him? I did not know where he was. Morrigan cleverly hid him from me. Until now. <gasps> T'was the well. Be thankful you did not drink. Imagine, bound to your dear mother for eternity. <laughs> You're going to steal the body of a young boy. If my daughter believes it, then it must be so. Kieran, I... As you wish, hear my proposal, dear girl. Let me take the lad, and you are free of me forever. I will never interfere with or harm you again. Or... Keep the lad with you, and you will never be safe from me. I will have my due. He returns with me. Decided so quickly. Do whatever you wish. Take over my body now if you must, but Kieran will be free of your clutches. I am many things, but I will not be the mother you were to me. A soul is not forced upon the unwilling, Morrigan. You were never in danger from me. As for you, Inquisitor, there is an ancient altar deep within a shaded wood. Go to it. Summon the dragon that is its guardian. Master it in combat, and it is yours to command against Corypheus. Fail and die. Wait! Well, we just answered a lot of questions that have been standing for the last, like, I don't even know how many years. How long ago did Dragon Age come out? Like, the last six years or so, we've had questions about Flemeth that were never quite answered, and now we know that she is the current incarnation of an ancient elven god? And just when we thought that we were getting every answer for her, we're still having mysterious decisions at the end of like, we're not quite sure what motivates her sometimes. She just blatantly reveals the fact that, oh, by the way, Morgan, you were never in danger from me because I can't just, I can't just take you over unwillingly, apparently. But even then, do we know if she's telling the truth? Granted, Flemeth doesn't, when I think back, I don't know if Flemeth really has a habit of lying. She just has a habit of not finishing sentences where the rest of the sentence could be really important. <laughs> are you all right, Kieran? You are not hurt. I feel lonely. She wanted the old god soul all along. Is it worth reminding myself that perhaps I do not know everything after all? My mother has the soul of an elven goddess, 
or whatever Mathal truly was, and her plans are unknown to me. You truly had no idea what she was. I knew she kept the truth from me. I even suspected she was not truly human, but this... I always thought the so-called elven gods were little more than glorified rulers, but now... I have doubt. And doubt is... an uncomfortable thing, Inquisitor. I suppose I should be thankful you drank from the well. Eternal servitude to Mother would not be my first choice. So Kieran had... the soul of an old god? Taken from the Archdemon at the final battle of the Fifth Blight. Yes, he has never known anything else. I'm uncertain what effect this will have on him. But why did you... I told you at the temple, the magic of old must be preserved, no matter how feared. Kieran had a destiny, and now it is in Flemeth's hands. I suppose we shall see what she does with it. For what it's worth, I think you did the right thing. Did I? She was testing me. And I cannot tell whether I passed. Mother said you must summon a dragon at an ancient altar. Do you know where that is? I think so. It's a place dedicated to Mithar. As, no doubt, is the guardian you must battle. Pray my mother has not led you astray, Inquisitor. She is not above doing so for her own amusement. Well, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and just assume that I'm gonna want to put that what, what's that sword back on that has bonus damage against dragons. Because I think we might. It sounds like we're about to fight a dragon. So. Just when I thought I was done with all the dragons in the game, it looks like we're going to have another one. The final piece. Go to the Altar of Mithal. This is interesting. I, th I think there's a there's a quest on a... I know there's an achievement for this game called... I think it's called On Burning Wings, and it's for recruiting a unique uh, ally. I mean, it's, re it's for recruiting a powerful ally, and the, the, it, being, it, be, it being called On Burning Wings makes me think that powerful ally is in fact this dragon. So we're going to go ahead and investigate the altar of Mithal and find out where we're going. After this, I think I'm going to come go around town and talk to all of our allies because they're pro <laughs> people are probably going to have stuff to say about this after we potentially recruit a dragon. I will say that after all that's happened here, I'm certainly interested in a uh, I'm cer I'm certainly interested in coming back to this g and uh, playing through that z that particular story bit again when uh when Morgan is the one who used the well, and then is bound by Plymouth. I wonder if Plymouth t approaches the entire situation differently when she has control of everything. So is the dragon going to be somewhere on this table? The dragon is not... There's no appearance on the table. Okay. So I probably have to look at... I probably just have to look at the map, just in general, is what I'm guessing here. Once it loads. There we go. So is there just a new- yep, there it is. Just a new thing. The final piece. The Well of Sorrows whispered of a power strong enough to end Corypheus. Go to the temp Altar of Mythal. We're gonna go ahead and bring our- our decked out, scary ass party. And we're gonna- our, our dragon hunting party is ready to fight an eleventh dragon now. More than we ever predicted, I suppose. It's here. I can feel it. Yes. I feel it as well. There seems to be nothing out here but wilderness. I'm sure it's here. Just keep an eye out. Alright. Time to find this altar of Mythal and this dragon we may have to encounter. Let me guess, he's right here in this big open area? Yeah, th this looks like a room where you fight a dragon. See, so oh, probably have to avoid- go up to the statue here. I'm sure the anti-elven, anti-apostate, and the, uh, the elven apostate, and the not elfy elf are all gonna have really colorful things to say about this after it's over with or none of them will who knows so is that 
Is this dragon bird woman creature supposed to represent Mythal? Is that supposed to be who Flemeth now is? This is all that's left of the altar. We few who travel far, call to me and I will come. Without mercy, without fear. Cry havoc in the moonlight. Let the fire of vengeance burn. The cause is clear. A very old invocation. Perfectly translated. Strange that there wasn't an altar like this at Mithal's temple. The temple was a place of justice. But this is different. This was where the elves called to her. Spoke to her. And one day she disappeared and they had no one to speak to. Would it be better if we left, my dear? No, definitely stay. I'm here, Flemeth. Just as you told me. If I must master a dragon to fight Corypheus, then send it. The Guardian of Mithal. All right, let's find out about this character. By the way, I really appreciate having. Oh, that's a cool. That's a cool little moment there for the party. Look at everyone in their pose. Perfectly posed because of the events of the uh, cutscene itself. I gotta say, uh, I really appreciate having the, the my protagonist be more educated about history and magic and everything like that. So, like, we just had arcane knowledge come up right there during that conversation. And in the previous conversation with Flemeth, I had a whole line of dialogue specifically because I was informed about history, which is the last point I just spent on the Inquisition recently that, that led to us having a, a extended recount about uh, Flemeth's history. So this is a pretty fucking crazy looking dragon, by the way. Well, he looks kind of, I think he looks kind of similar to the last one we fought, the one that was the, uh, the highest level one in the open world. But this one might be, oh, I can't get, I can't reach it from here with, on the uh, tactical menu. I'll have to get closer before I can take a look at what its, tra its traits are. Oh, yeah, there's a dramatic pose. So let's take a look here. Vulnerable to cold, immune to slowing and disabling effects, perceptive greater fire resistance. So, level tw oh, level 23 dragon. This could be tough if we're not careful. Oh no! I went into the final- I, I went into that mission and I didn't buy people potions. Oh, this was a mistake? Alright. I'm sure we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Let's go make a g goddamn mess. So, how's everyone doing on focus abilities? Everyone except for Vasti has a has rank one ready. Okay, might be fun to just get started with a a Sarah super attack. Oop, avoiding some incoming fire attacks right off the bat. Already under attack. Let's do. Oops, that's the wrong button. Wasn't holding the trigger anymore. Get in there. Look at all that damage. Wow, that's a lot of damage very quickly. Then we need to get Sarah back out of there really quickly. Oh, she's in slow mo mode. Lucky me, I got to sort of undo my mistake there by immediately coming back into the fray. Look at all that damage. So, Vivian and Solos are taking some pretty bad hits already. What are they doing right now? Are they are they, are they they safe in the zone? They are. Okay, so does either of them have... Alright, Solos has barrier. Let's cast that to keep us going. Please cast barrier, Solos. There we go. We need that to keep us healthy. Uh, Vasti, go ahead and use regeneration potion. And... I can hang out near him as Vivian to recover. Ow. Danger. Jesus. Go ahead and quick bubble on myself and Vasti to keep Vivian going as she goes and... Oh, wow. Yeah, hanging out... Trying to hang out near that portal is not going to work for me. At this point, best option for Vivian is probably... Oh, wait. I can I can help a bit by doing this. Ta-da! Everyone recovers like crazy for a while. Oh, wait. Oh, that's the mistake I've been making about Vivian. Shit. Uh, I forgot that Vivian kind of makes an AoE, doesn't she? Oh wait, fire, she's fi he's fire resistant, this is pointless. And I just casted portal- <laughs> Someone else casted a uh, barrier on me right when I was about to cast it, which made it pointless for me to do it. Go ahead and do walking fortress, because that walking fortress will make me especially likely to generate uh, armor. Just keep shouting things at him. There we go. Alright, Vasti's got f in full defensive mode. Still has an ongoing uh, AoE heal too. That's, ke that's keeping him especially hardy. He's unlikely to take much damage. We're about a quarter of the way f through the fight already, which is not bad progress. 
uh, fire resistance means it's probably not worth using Solus's focus uh, 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 Solus's focus ability because it's I believe it's fire based. I mean it, it summons burning meteors, so I, I assume that counts as fire damage. Ow, rude. I think I'll be fine though. Walking fortress kind of negates any incoming damage for a while if I want to do that. So back in the fray, challenge him to one-on-one -on -one combat for a while. And do everything I can to generate more and more uh, aggro to get him to try to focus on me if I can. That camera's losing its mind trying to focus on what's happening here. Alright, he's coming up to about being ha being about half down. Has he generated guard yet? I don't think that's been like a thing he's done yet. Which is weird. It means that I've just... Been... Ooh. Come when I summon it. Once. That's enough to fight Corypheus, however. I have my dragon. So when we find him, we'll fight between two dragons. <laughs> Mad plan. Love it. Well, that's freaking awesome. So there we go. We have a dragon on our team. Someone, someone was a, someone said you should have let Morgan have the, the have the power. If Morgan had the power, would I have been able to summon a dragon? I mean, maybe. I don't know until I try it myself. But I like to think that this is only happening because of the approach I've taken with Vasti. Because that seems like a pretty goddamn awesome uh, decision. So we need to speak with the advisors in the war room. All right, that's the end of the final piece. Next mission is going to be Doom Upon All the World, which I believe is the genuine final mission. We'll see what happens here. I kind of put this off because I, I, I heard that the final piece was basically just a really quick prologue to the final mission. So I figured I'd put that off to the end too and sort of approach it as all as one. So I'm going to go back to the... Uh, I'm going to go back to Skyhold, and I'm going to do a quick circuit to talk to everybody to see if they have any responses to the whole dragon situation and Morgan and stuff like that. Then we'll talk to the advis advisors and actually progress to the final mission, and we'll see what happens then. We're, this is it, guys. We're actually about to wrap up this incredibly long series. I'm both sad and anxious with ex excitement about it, because it's a, it's a pretty cool accomplishment to get this far in a big, such a big game and for just by far the most ridiculously long series I've ever done on something. But also, I'll be sad to see it go, although I'm, I have pretty much 100% faith in the idea that there's going to be some sort of additional content at some point that'll bring me back, and I'll be, I'll be looking forward to that. Hopefully I'll be done with Bloodborne by then. Morgan, of all people, probably has some follow-up. Mother must be very pleased. The Herald of Andraste, leader of the Inquisition, at her personal beck and call. I feel certain what happened at the Temple of Mathal must somehow have been her influence. Perhaps she's influenced more than just what happened at the Temple. With Corypheus, you mean? He does have that elven orb. Which he had to acquire somewhere. Yes, I see. It's hard to imagine her motivation for doing so. Then again, everything about her is hard to imagine. I suppose we have little choice but to proceed and be thankful she assisted us at all. Do you trust what Flemeth told us? About what she is? I... I am uncertain. I knew there was more to her than I realized that she was not truly human. This? I once found her grimoire, and that was where I learned her immortality was gained by stealing the bodies of her daughters. Flemeth claims I misunderstood. It is not forced on the unwilling. Meaning I might agree to such a thing? <sighs> Impossible, yet there seemed an undeniable sense of truth to the things she told us. All my years spent hunting for arcane mysteries, and the greatest was the one I left behind. 
So what do you intend to do now? Now? I will move on. You have what you need to face Corypheus. Where I will go is uncertain. I must consider the fact that Flemeth may yet have plans for me. You are her servant, but I am her daughter. I doubt she will let me slip completely from her clutches. Whatever happens, I wish you well in the coming battle, Inquisitor. I'd like to know more about you. If you have questions, then ask. I'll leave you to the garden. Until next time, then. Apparently, I don't have any more questions for her. Alright, so Morgan's actually going to leave at this point. Which is a bit of a surprise, but the same thing happened with Hawk. I guess I just get caught off guard by the fact that, uh... In every other Bioware game, your group of people you amass for the, uh, Resistance... Uh, for both Mass Effect and Dragon Age, they always stick around until the very climax of the, of the story, and then you find, and then when there's a sequel, you find out what they did in the meantime afterwards. But this is a rare case where, like Hawk and this and Morgan and a few other characters, they kind of just come and go in the story, and they actually leave before the story itself concludes, which is in itself unusual. I also like the idea of like what that. Like, Corypheus could, uh, what if Flemeth's behind Corypheus this entire time? That's a completely, that, I mean, it's possible. We don't, we don't really know what her motivations are, and she could arguably be, be behind everything, but we still don't know enough about her motiva motivations to extrapolate from there. And she doesn't seem the type that ever likes to explain anything. Sarah? Love seeing you, yeah? Is there some concern you have about me becoming a champion? No, there's no concern I have about you becoming champion. I'm worried you'll be an ass. You know what they're like. Well, not champions, maybe, but they're rubbing cousins, the chavliers. They're shit. Some people get full of themselves when they think they're better, right? That bunch get it on a flag. It's a standard. That's not better. Why are you worried? What do they do? People to them, little people, aren't anything. Not even slaves, because slaves are worth something, yeah? They want your food, they take your food. They want your wife, they take your wife. They're shit. So please stay better. I'm not like that. I'll be a champion of the people. That sounds really stupid. But all right, I buy it for now. I'll be back if I need you. Go on. Blackwall? So it's done. Just about. The little ones in the camps don't have much. I thought this might cheer them up. Even in the midst of war, they deserve to be children. It's almost time. Are you ready? I am. I've been ready for a long time. Things become clear on the battlefield. It's where I truly know myself. Everything else fades. You're content. I'm glad. I am. There has always been one constant. I am a soldier. I am trained to kill, to follow orders, and to ask no questions. But this time, I'm fighting for something I believe in. The people I care about. I chose to stay with the Inquisition. I chose this fight. And the difference is profound. I have only you to thank. So Blackwall's resolve to conclude this. I was actually starting to I was actually starting to genuinely be concerned that we're never going to have another moment with that character because it's been so long. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. You're just in time. We almost had to start without you. We couldn't have that, could we? Look who showed up, everybody. Deal him in, would you, Ruffles? I do hope I recall the rules. It's been ages since I've played a game of Wicked Grace. Grab a seat. We're ready to start. Are we playing cards or what? Are three drakes better than a pair of swords? Ugh, I can never remember. Seeker, remember how I said, don't show anyone your hand? That rule includes announcing it to the table. There's a crown on his head, but a sword too. His head didn't want either. Don't talk to the face cards, kid. You seem to have enough people. I have a thousand things to do. Losing money 
can be both relaxing and habit-forming. Give it a try. Curly, if any man in history ever needed a hobby, it's you. Dealer starts. Oh, I believe I'll start at... Oh, three coppers. Do you think that's too daring? Maybe I'll make it one. No. Boldness. Three it is. Seriously, who starts at three coppers? Silver or go home? Sounds good. I'm in. Bolder the better, right? I'm in. Me too. Well, are you in? Don't want to don't want to concern you guys, but I do have about twenty thousand gold. I'm in, and raising another silver. You haven't even looked at your cards. Well, our illustrious leader is betting we're bluffing. You are bluffing. <laughs> the poor recruit ran out into the dining hall in nothing but his knickers. And this profound silence fell over the hall as 70 mages and 30 Templars all turned to stare at once. Then a slow round of applause began and spread until every soul was on their feet. A standing ovation. <laughs> what, what did he do? Saluted, turned on his heel, and marched out like he was in full armor. <laughs> he did not. Good man. <laughs> You're shitting us. <laughs> That's how you know it's true. I could never put that in a book. Too unlikely. I've got one for you. So, my kith was hired for a simple caravan escort in southern Navarra. Twelve days of walking alongside donkeys and men who smelled like donkeys across flat nothingness. Chakrakar turned to the donkey and said, We'll let this go if you will, and walked away. <laughs> Not bad. You don't mind if I steal that one, do you? <laughs> well done. <laughs> you ought to tell stories more often. I like the part with the rabbit. There should be more rabbits in stories. <laughs> that was scandalous. It would ruin the Inquisition if anyone found out. Tell it again. And the dealer takes everything. I win again. Deal again. I figured out your tells, Lady Ambassador. Commander. Everyone knows a lady has no tells. Then let's see if your good fortune lasts one more hand. I want another chance to win my dignity back. Deal me in. Don't say a word, dwarf. <laughs> I tried to warn you, Curly. You won the whole pot. I knew you could do it, my love. I'm leaving. I don't want to witness our commander's walk of shame back to the barracks. Well, I do. It comes off. I didn't know it came off. Glad you decided to join us tonight. It's too easy to mistake you for the Inquisitor. I enjoyed this. See? That's what I mean. It's easy to forget you're not just an icon or symbol. Like those statues of Andraste holding bowls of fire. A at least it is for me. You up for another game when this is all over, Inquisitor? I wouldn't miss it. Good. It'll take me a while to talk Cullen into it. Maybe I'll work the revenge angle. Who's that? Did I win? Well, there she was. I was wondering exactly where Sarah was. Because, uh... I was uh, the whole the whole scene. I was sitting there keeping track of who was missing from the scene. So I was like, "All right, checklist time, warriors. All right, there's uh, like there's Iron Bull, there's Blackwall, there's okay. All the warriors are there. Mages, 
Uh, only mage is Dorian. No Solus, no Vivian. Okay, that makes sense. Solus is always the weird loner type, always studying spirits and not getting along with people that great. And everyone weird, everyone's weirded out by him. He, he's always off in his weird little room painting murals. Vivian's just kind of awful and thinks she's better than everyone and would never be taking part in a lowly game of gambling in the tavern. But I was like, Sarah, this is like Sarah. I mean, Sarah, practic- Sarah literally lives in the tavern. Like we've been to her room there and it seems like exactly the type of thing she was doing. Oh yeah. She was already drunk under the table. The funny thing there is she had a, she actually already had a view of, uh, of Colin of all people who else was missing. So we t- covered rogues. All three rogues were there because of course they were and all three warriors were there because of course there were, but only one mage was there. Advisors. We had, uh, no Morgan who, frankly morgan could be gone by now there's also for all i know if morgan if if morgan had the power of the well she may have she may have even left with flemeth or something could have happened there where she wouldn't even come back to the skyhold with us potentially i don't i don't actually know uh colin and josephine were there being being their awesome selves like always and uh liliana's probably off brooding in the tower and being a spy and being she she has become less approachable over time, unfortunately. But that was that was a nice final hurrah for a big party of people. That it's a good, nice little way, n- little moment to celebrate the cast this char- this game has because it might be the last time we see some of them. I don't know what the ending is going to bring, but we're pretty close to it at this point. <laughs>